Well, welcome to our third session or unit. And today for the teaching intro, I just want to quickly point out it's another APA focused class, which is going to make it extremely dry and boring. Not a lot of options here to go on. Um, not much we can do except you know, just push through. It's really important, I think, for students to get the feel for the very specific rules and to understand that these things are specific and technical, that they're not um, just make up whatever you want. Uh, from the teacher side, what I'd like to do is maybe review some of the tools we're using in the class that kind of help students get through the assignments and the class schedule and help me as a teacher to get things organized. And as you can see in the class, one of the biggest things I use is actually this uh, Google Sheet. So when the students come in from the very first class, I open up this Google Sheet and what I do is have them put, and put their information. So let's take a look at the Google Sheet and how you can use that in your class. And it really helps me even when I'm live in the class, I'm using it all the time. So a Google Sheet, of course, looks like this or a Google document. I use a sheet and the reason I use the Google Sheet, which is like an Excel spreadsheet, is that it has the capability to have multiple sheets. So you can see uh, down in the bottom left corner here that you actually can have multiple, whoops, you can actually have multiple sheets and each one of those you can change uh, the title, uh, the information that's in them of course, but most importantly you can even change the permissions. We'll talk about that in a second. So in this uh, sheet what I do is I have the student list here which has our student names and contact information, if, uh, for specifically their email. You're going to need their emails because you need that to add permissions to the Google document. I have a schedule where I kind of have a schedule of what's proposed and also I write on there what we've done each week so this helps me stay organized and another page for a few notes. I find this really an in, uh, informative way that students can get information and you can receive information in, in detail about the students and updating things as, as you need to go along. Okay, now probably everybody knows how to use Google Sheets so it's not a big deal, but I think uh, the insight I've had for using it for class is that you need to really manage the permissions for it. Now, uh, the way to do this is not always straightforward and Google just changing it all the time so a little bit hard to give a definitive answer. However, one thing is for sure the document is going to have a share button on it and if you push that share button, let me move that over here, you can see that that big blue button right there is a share button. If you push that share, click that, you're going to get this option where you can see the address of the document, you can pass that on an email to students and they would use that to access the document. But down here, more, more specifically is, you can control who accesses the document and whether they can view it, or whether they can view it and change it, or anyone who's not on the list not view it. So you can actually limit it so it's not everyone in the world. You've probably done this before you have experience with it. The key thing I use in class that I have to pay attention to is I have to keep changing uh, how this is shared. So Google takes you into this window where they ask you, do you want to share this only with specific people, anyone on the web or anyone with the link? And for specific people, then it has to be people in your list. If you want to change everyone at once, then it's everyone with the link. So right now I chose anyone with this link and I can say view or I can say edit. So what I do for the very first couple weeks of class is I say anyone with the link and I let them uh, edit it. I ask them to then put their names, their, in this case, research topic on there. And this is not anyone on the web, but anyone who had the web, had the link, the URL link, they could get into it and that's the students. Usually the link is very long and complicated, so what I do is I go to a URL shortener and I use Google's shortener. So it takes a long link and makes it uh, short. And after a couple weeks, they get their information into the document and then I close it from their editing so they don't you know, mess it up and I can keep some grade and scores on there. So in this 
what you do is you change from anyone over to specific people. And by selecting specific people, then you say save, click save. And now you see the list of people. How did I get this list? I took the emails they put into the sheet, copied those emails just all at one time, all together. I just select the whole thing, copy it all, dump it into that list and Google can parse it correctly. You don't need to do it one by one. It's very good that way. And each, when I did that, it asked me, how do you want all of these people at once to uh, handle their permissions? <coughs> cut, cut, cut. <coughs> cut. NG, NG. <sighs> to handle their permissions, I go ahead and there's a little uh, drop down here that will say edit or just view. So I put all these people in at once. And with all these people in at once, I say view. And then I enter, and then you can see each person comes up here. And I can scroll through the long list of students. I've had classes where I have you know, 60, 70 people on this list. So you didn't need to do it one by one, but you needed when you pasted them all in at once, you select one permission for them all. In this case, I make it view so they cannot edit it. Now then what happens is some students will come to you later and say, hey, I've got a problem. I need to change something. Or in the case of my research writing class, they need to change their topic they've listed. So how do I handle that? I come back here. Come back and you change not each one, but rather the group, the overall page one, the whole group, this one here. I change the way it's accessed and that would be anyone with a link. Now anyone with a link, then I can say they can view or they can edit it. So Google will probably change this interface, but it's something like that. Google basically gives you three overall permissions. Those three levels are anyone on the web, uh, the, anyone with a link, and then specific people will have different permissions. That means they have to log into Google to see that. Okay, I just find this really uh, useful to use. I also find that by having students bring in their computers, it allows them to do the things that they feel comfortable with. Um, they maybe need to check schedules to do a few other things. Yeah, it doesn't bother me so much. But by using the Google Sheet, you kind of keep them focused. So rather than fighting or pushing against them having their computers in class and doing other things, you invite them to their computers in class. In fact, I require them to have their computers in class. And then by having this material here, they're kind of keeping up or keeping occupied a little bit and they don't get distracted. I know it sounds odd. It does seem to work though. Very quickly, just to look at the sheet, uh, very simple, uh, nothing too special there. You can see here a couple of my Google addresses on there. And then over here, I've got my schedule and my comments that we keep up every week. So that's how I use uh, Google Docs with um, your class. I was really big on using Google tools previously. They had some really useful tools, specifically one called Notebook. Uh, but you know, this is the problem with using other companies' tools. They come and go. Even Google, a big company so successful, many of the tools I've used for class before get canceled and then I'm kind of left out without any support. Google Docs is a little bit that way. However, if I had to, I could export the doc, put it on a server somewhere else into an Excel sheet. So it's not a total loss. The problem is if you get involved with very specific tools, uh, especially they call themselves teaching tools, this can be a problem because your information gets locked up there and there's really no way out if something happens. So I try to be involved with tools, but not overly involved, if that makes any sense. So Google Sheets or Google Docs is a nice compromise because it can be done in another way. Okay, so that just about wraps it up. Uh, in the coming weeks, we're gonna do APA some more, focusing on APA, and today you saw I really struggled. I, I'm 
trying to get students to understand how to focus down to a research topic. I think this is true of everyone who's just learning research, how to get down to a very small topic, get away from these newspaper headlines and general ideas. Next week I'll reinforce that and then next week I'm going to go more in detail on specific writing feedback, give them more ideas. ideas. This week I did give them feedback. It's under online software where they can see the feedback. Next week I'll go over it using this kind of cold calling where I call students. You did see that uh, today's responsiveness is not bad. Even though we're in a small space, I feel students you know, are getting along quite well. The only problem is everyone's very quiet, so I need to try to push up the volume if I'm going to do a kind of recording like this. And I'm not really sure how to solve that problem yet. Uh, I look forward to trying to solve it next week.